the simple portobello mushroom to the black mold growing in your walls, fungi have developed into some of the weirdest, tastiest and in some cases deadliest life forms known today. Humans have been using fungi since ancient times for a variety of purposes. Yeasts have been harnessed since the Neolithic for the production of bread, beer and wine. Some of our most important medicines such as penicillin have been sourced from fungi. It is even suggested that early human migration out of Africa could have been made possible by the use of amadou, a spongy material derived from the fungus Fomes fomentarius. This material produced a smouldering flame when ignited, which could be carried long distances, effectively creating portable fires. Not only have fungi played a major role in human civilization, they have also had a major impact on the history of life on the planet. So what makes a fungi fungi, and how did they evolve? Originally believed to be primitive plants, fungi are now considered to be their own kingdom. In fact, it is now known that they are more closely related to animals than they are to plants. The kingdom of fungi is divided up into five major phyla. The earliest and most primitive of these are known as the chytrids, which are responsible for the deaths of many amphibians. Then there is the zygomycota, which are commonly found growing on breads, fruits and vegetables. Then there is the ascomycota. Some of the more familiar fungal species are found within this group, which can be both detrimental and beneficial to human life. Then there is the club fungi, which includes the common mushroom found in your local supermarket. And finally, we have the glomeromycota. Over 80% of plant species are found in symbiosis with this fungi. Fungi are eukaryotic organisms. That means that they have a nucleus and organelles. They have a cell wall made of chitin, which is also found in the exoskeletons of arthropods. They are nearly all multicellular, with the exception of single-celled yeasts. Multicellular fungi are made up of thread-like filaments called hyphae. When the hyphae group together, they form what is known as the mycelium, which is the vegetative part of the fungus. Fungi are heterotrophic, meaning they can't produce their own food like plants can, so they must take it from their surroundings. They are also mostly saprophytic, meaning they feed off dead and decaying organic matter. So what do we know about the history of fungi from their fossil record? And more specifically, what does it tell us about their domination of land? The fossil record of fungi is minimal compared to that of the animal or plant kingdoms. This is due to the fact that they are soft-bodied, have fleshy tissue, and they easily degrade. The earliest fossil evidence of fungi appears 2.4 billion years ago. Pillow basalts from the Paleoproterozoic have been found containing strand-like structures in their fissures and vesicles, which are believed to be mycelium. This finding suggests fungi evolved in the deep sea rather than on land. From 1.6 billion years ago to 550 million years ago, we find microfossils called Tapania. It has been found in many locations across the globe and is believed to be an early fungal species. These fungi were multicellular, benthic and lived in shallow marine environments. Based on molecular data, it is likely that fungi first colonized land during the Cambrian. 460 million years ago, during the mid ordovician we find the fungi in Lomelia, part of the phylum Glomer and Mycota. Although they were found in near shore deposits, they would later go on to form a symbiotic relationship with plants and eventually facilitate their colonization of land. It isn't until the early Silurian that we see the first fossil evidence of multicellular life on land. This came in the form of tiny strand-like fossils which represented the hyphae of the fungus, Tortotubus protuberans. Tortotubus was able to collect nutrients from decaying organic matter using digestive enzymes. These enzymes were strong enough to break down solid rock and helped in the formation of soils. This process set the stage for complex plant life. From the late Silurian and through the Devonian, the fungus Prototaxides dominated the land. This was by far the largest land organism at the time. At nine meters tall and one meter wide, it towered over everything else. Extensive hyphae networks provided Prototaxides with nutrients by digesting and decaying organic matter from far and wide. Prototaxides may have even provided habitat for some of the creatures living at the time. Tunnel mazes believed to be burrows can be found in Prototaxides fossils. Prototaxides began to decline towards the end of the Devonian and by the Carboniferous was completely extinct. Although reasons for the extinction are unknown, it coincided with the rise of vascular plants and the first forests. During the Carboniferous, 
vascular plants became more diverse and abundant, which in turn led to the diversification of fungal species. In fact, evidence of all modern classes of fungi can be seen by the late Carboniferous. 250 million years ago, the permian Triassic extinction event occurred. This was the most severe mass extinction in all of history, killing 96% of marine and 70% of terrestrial species, almost ending life on Earth. Interestingly though, after this event we see a massive spike in the abundance of fungi. This is due to all the dead organisms upon which the fungi fed. Some paleontologists even use this spike as a marker for the permian triassic boundary. The next fungal fossil we is from the Cretaceous. Here we find the oldest fossilised mushroom preserved in limestone Lagerstaten, dubbed Gondwana garrosites magnificus. It grew on the supercontinent of Gondwana while dinosaurs still roamed the land before falling into a river and being washed out to sea. It displayed the, all the characteristics of modern mushrooms, such as a stalk, gills and cap. With a history spanning billions of years, fungi have helped shape life as we know it today. They were pioneers of land colonisation and helped pave the way for plant life. With their ability to decompose and recycle organic material, they help create soils and essentially form life from death. 